Yeah, I was sneaking on trains until I got here. Do you like your hair? What? It's this. This is a piece of art. 100% black chocolate. No coffee, no Wow. Chocolate. Sometimes it's weird when people think, how did you achieve that? Like, guys, it's just my nature. I hate if I take it out of twist. It's definitely end up like this, but yeah. Ciao guys and welcome back to Lambis. I think there is no better day to touch on this topic than today, especially when I'm feeling so African. I took like my twist out, I tried to just comb everything out. As you can see here, probably wondering why don't I have hair all around me. I usually just leave one bun to not at the end that, that I don't have a lot of hair around my neck, I hate that. Yeah, topic for today is really being black in Germany. African born and raised from Namibia, like I'm African, this is my roots. Also everything that I, I think my personality, the person that I am today is based on my African heritage culture and how I was raised. In Africa. Before we start I just wanted to give a little bit of a disclaimer that um, there's no experience that is right or wrong. I've seen a whole lot of different experiences on YouTube for people living in different parts of Germany and for this episode of this video I'm actually just going to share with you my experience here in this beautiful country nine years in east germany first thing if you're like an afro girl like me with all of this going on and i'm like i'm very proud of my afro culture my like african beauty girl thing is really my thing and usually i would just go to work depending on how i'm feeling like this i would go to work I'll go to maybe a work conference, like end of the, the last day of the conference when you just like party and stuff. Or I would go with big pantu knots and like really like um, just African styles. So I would say number one for me is always, may I touch your hair? Mm. And I'm like, do you know this is African art? It takes time, energy, creativity to get my hair popping like this. So I'm not gonna let anybody touch my afro, especially when it is like, like especially when I cover my afro like this. I don't even like Ali touching my hair when it's like this. Like, no, don't you mean to mess it up? So that I'm always like, mm -mm, ain't happening, <laughs> ain't happening. I won't let anybody touch my hair when it's out like this. Sorry, I work. Like I'm saying, this is African art. I put in some work, creativity to make sure that the hair is popping like this. You're not going to touch it. This, this one, I don't even know what to say about it. Things has gotten better a little bit, but this. So, if you live in the east part, now here I have to highlight the east part because of course I experienced this here. Trust me, since three years ago, I now get questioned everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I'm telling you, I go to work, like I'm doing my, I do a consultation for, for a pharmaceutical company and I go to work and the first thing I got asked is like, are you a refugee? It just, things have changed and you know, when I first came here, the first, I would say maybe the first five years, nobody have ever asked me that question, but since about, I would say, three to two and a half years or three to two years ago, this part of Germany got so many refugees. Now it's like every black person walking around is a refugee. This doesn't really offend me. I think it doesn't really offend me because, of course, it irritates, but it doesn't offend me so much. The part that I don't like about it, I feel like refugee are also people is most, I mean, not 
there are also I know some refugees, I have worked also with some refugees who are just normal people in their countries and they have political instability in Moti who like academics, they would obviously get integrated and start working like normal jobs and I'm thinking like do, do they have to be discriminated every single day because I'm with a being told you're a refugee? Like what does that has to do with your job or anything? Like I remember I went to an office, I wanted to ask something, I enter then the lady just screamed, no, refugee, they are not allowed here. Like, we, we don't help refugees. I was like, you didn't say hello. You say you didn't say, how can I help you? You didn't say what you're looking for here. It's just, it, like, there was just somebody in front of me, done with that client, and so is a black person, just say, sorry, refugees are not, like, we are not helping refugees here. We don't assist or we don't consult or do anything with refugee and it sounded more like with black person because they didn't ask if I was they just saw my color and judge me as a refugee so this is terrible and one time I went to a, a doctor place and also they're like no refugees are not treated here and then there was also a thing with my visa thing like after the after the my PhD, when I was getting my work visa, it was still the same thing. And that's when the refugee were there. I saw that the guy was really like, oh, it just it wasn't working on the things as before, even though I have all the visa requirement I've studied here. Yeah, worked here already for four, pretty much for four years towards the end of my PhD. But it was already like, oh, I hate refugee. Although in my file, there was nothing that showed that I'm a refugee. It just weird it, you also sometimes just on the train just i was one day i was with my friend from zimbabwe and we were on the train to somewhere and this guy just walked by and like you're refugees from east africa i was like we're not refugee and my friend is only here to visit and it's just weird like seriously like hey i mean they are all sort of crazy thing one time there was the lady who asked me something like do you like your hair? I I just honestly looked at her to make her realize that do you and do you realize what you're asking me? Like what what the hell? It's like coming to you and I don't know, like I, did I ever given you any sign that I don't like my hair? Of course I like my hair. I come to work like this all the time. I love the fact that I can have twist, I can have hair straight, I can have curly hair when I want when I have twist out and things like that. And I, and I was, she, some, at some point she was really like, uh, 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 uh. I mean, she was trying to explain it, but I was like, who asked people such things? Do you like your hair? Absolutely. I, I don't even expect people to ask such things. I just think it's ridiculous. This is most likely to happen. Like if you have, if you work or if you live in small cities. I love to save my coins. I'm always looking for cheaper places to rent because I have a car, I can drive to work anytime. So I really end up renting apartments in tiny, tiny places, maybe where they've never been or they're maybe rarely ever a foreigner. It's not like they're not foreigners, but I think when you're black, just have to put it out there if you're african but some african people are also not like dark skin if you're dark skinned it's it's just like automatically you are classified or categorized as a foreigner so two some years ago i was used to rent an apartment in a very very small village and i think the first day my neighbors saw me they were quite old they're really really old i was saying maybe they were like 85 to 90 or 80 to 90 they were really old and i the first day they saw me unlocking the door to my apartment which was directly next to theirs they just stood for a moment they stood and then they watched me walk to my to my door open my door into the apartment and when I was and they didn't even say hello I said hello they didn't even they just they were literally probably scared I don't know probably they thought oh my god I have no idea they, they were like we oh no we have some we have a foreigner in our apartment complex and four is that everything in there I don't know they just uh, black 
So they were just like, and I said hello, and I was just smiling, and I went to my but it was really like that. Like, and I was just like, oh my goodness, all people, but I'm just gonna be nice, say good morning every day, you respond here with time, they started to say good morning to me and it was fine. But I think this is really like if you're living in a small village. The, another thing that I think annoy most of the people, for me this doesn't really annoy me, it's, it's like where you're from, but for me this is not an issue. If somebody just say where you're from, every time somebody asks me where am I from, hmm, with pride. Namibia and I even tried to explain where it is on the map and you don't have to say you're from Africa I'm going to make sure that I teach you Africa is a continent with countries and I'm from this specific country somewhere in Southern Africa so that I don't get offended but the question that really offends me is how did you get to Germany you know how can I put this in, in a nice way without getting pissed already while I'm talking about it? When you meet somebody, like, maybe, really somebody you don't know so well, you just meet for the first time, you went to a gathering, you cheers, you start meeting, and the, the first tea break, the first thing that comes up is, how did you get here? Or that it just, I don't know, it just some sort of weird things make you feel like sometimes people think you... I, I don't even know what's on people's mind, but it's just weird. Like, everybody get on the flight to come here. Or, I don't know, maybe they come by car if they're coming. <laughs> or they come by bicycle if they are doing their tour through Africa. But I, I don't know. It's weird. I, I find it very weird because I don't know if... I don't think I have to explain to somebody that, oh, how did I get here? No, I bought a flight ticket. And I got on the flight. I got dropped off at the airport. Or maybe they're expecting me to say, oh, I was sneaking on trains until I got here. I don't know, but I found this very weird. This next one is again is about this hair salon. If you live in a small area, in like I'm saying, most of the time I just go to small areas because I like to save on rent. Like I'm not going to hide that. You just it's a simple thing. Like I just want to go to the salon and color my hair. I want to go to the salon and just for the lady to trim my hair. Yeah, it's a mess. Or oh, just want to twist my eyebrow. My worst first and the worst experience was like I wanted to go to the salon just to just to do a little bit of cleaning up my eyebrows, and the lady wanted to judge me two times. Now I don't know if because I'm African or just because I have thick hair or because I have a lot of hair, but she just looked at me and like, "Ooh, you <laughs> double the price." And there was already a price listed on the wall with everything and I saw that she charged me double and she say it's because you really have thick and a lot of eyebrows. If you look at my eyebrows at the moment on the camera they're not that thick of course because I did something but if you look at my hair you can imagine my eyebrows are like this thick. I was a little bit offended but I was like oh, maybe I have also a lot of hair. It just it's offensive because at home I've never experienced something like that. And oh, this one is it's also a very funny thing. I get asked a lot, especially during the summer, all the time. Dark skinned people don't get sunburn or they don't get tan like when I was living in Namibia and also here when I'm just with my African friends and we go during this summer day we go to the beach and we spend the whole day at the beach. Now also with Ali, where you come back home, I was like, oh my goodness, you're already like two, two shades dark. And and I know that when I go in the sun, my skin absolutely absorbs the sun, I think, way faster than Ali. And I need to change to two tones deeper foundation. This is kind of obvious, but I feel like, I don't know, some people here, like, I would spend the whole day... No, not even a day, I'll say two weeks in Tuscan near the beach, tanning, and I come back like deep chocolate, sun-kissed, and they just say, we don't see the difference. Like, do you even get sunburned? Do you even, your skin even, like, change color according to exposure to the sun and things like that? But I feel like sunburn, maybe it's less likely. It does happen. It have happened to me before, like, some extra... I have worked before as an ecologist and that was like hmm, about 12 hours of working in direct sun in the Namib desert. The temperature, I think, about 48 
So there, after two weeks of collecting data and stuff, definitely you might need to go to the pharmacy and buy something against sunburn and you should also get some sunscreen when you go there. You, you get that sometimes the temperatures are just very harsh also for a dark skin person. Although I think if it's just mild condition, you don't get that as fast as the other people. But you still, your skin still really ups, like change. The, it, it becomes a little bit darker. It just... It changes color according to sun exposure. And when I'm surrounded with my Af by my African friends and when I'm going to the beach with Ali, he sees that. So when people say, no, I don't think dark skinned people, that uh, this happen, like it does happen. And I think that also the other really major difference with uh, sunburn, it's because if I think of, African lifestyle and if I think of my parents at the village people at the village don't wake up during the summer going to lie half naked the whole day under the sun during the day they make sure they have umbrellas they have maybe light cotton clothes that are up to you just to, they don't want sunburn or otherwise in Namibia especially in the northern part my friends live close to the Himbo area. We have also the cream and the powder that the Himbo use that we use if we are cultivating, if we are working in the field during the uh, a very hot sunny day to make sure that we have just this layer of sunscreen from the Himbo village. And all this thing we, we do, it's, it make a difference than waking up and going to lie the whole day under the sun. So maybe you have more, of course, sensitivity of the skin is there, but behavior is also. And I think if I go home in December and wake up every single day at 38 degrees, lying half naked in a bikini under the sun for, I don't know, three, five hours, I think I'm, I'm certain I'm going to get sunburned. So that was my take on uh, just racism in Germany and also a little bit of a day in my life how is it like for me and for me and my partner of course which you know is sleeping here in Germany I would say that's my take and I will also say overall these are the few things that I've discussed that I've noticed and I think this obviously so many positive experience I think sometimes it's also the perspective like it's a personal thing like us you're more focused on everything that is said to you that is negative you magnify that or you're more like i don't know i just tend to like mm, i really have to evaluate if somebody is somebody who is worth my time or if this is somebody who's just writing uh you are black is ugly on a youtube channel because I, because i'm black and and i have a youtube channel so like do, do i have time for that or focus on other people also saying oh my goodness your afro hair beautiful otherwise it's a beautiful place to live in and i love my life here i also love you know it's, it's some challenges here and there but life without challenge is boring if it was just like ali would say perfect life is boring so that was it if you enjoy this video give us a like subscribe to our channel and most important guys leave a comment in the description below it's weird because even when Ali's not with me I'm always saying give us a call give us a like and things like that. yeah but it's lumpy so please give us a like this this experiences depends on which part of Germany you are actually living in and if you're living in the city or if you are living in the in the rural area like in smaller villages and also like just what kind of uh, people you associate yourself with if you go to maybe you're more like an out person you go out during the night and stuff or you're more like just a stay at home and go to work person like myself so experiences are different based on those things